Yo, what is good, Jets Nation? Welcome back to Jets Media. This is Richie, and in this video, I want to give you guys my flight preview to the New York Jets Week 4 matchup against the Tennessee Titans. This one is indeed at home, and it'll be kicking off at 1 p.m. This is going to be a tough matchup for the New York Jets, as the Tennessee Titans are 2-1, while the New York Jets are 0-3 and still looking for the first victory of the season for new head coach Robert Sala. Now, I'm really excited to break down this game because, as we know, the Jets have been struggling all mightily, and yes, it's on one side of the ball on the offense. So I'm really excited to break down this game because I have a feeling that the Jets offense will start to show some life in this game. So before we hop into the video, I just want to mention if you guys are new to Jets media, please make sure you smash that subscribe button. And if you want to check me out over on Instagram and Twitter, that is at NYJets underscore media. And if you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to thumbs it up. With that being said, let's hop right into the flight preview. So first and foremost, let's talk about some injury news. Uh, we actually find out that the Tennessee Titans wide receivers are banged up. AJ Brown is questionable and Julio Jones is questionable so if one or two of these guys or both of them are out that's going to be obviously a really big advantage for the new york jets but we still have to realize they have the best one of the best if not the best running backs in the entire nfl and derrick henry how the hell are we going to be able to slow him down i don't know but as we know the big strength to this jets team so far has been the defensive side of the ball robert Sala and jeff olbrick has done their job they're playing winning football obviously they're not perfect they're not top five or anything like that but going into the season, I think Jets fans, including myself, didn't really think the Jets defense is going to be able to play at the level we expected due to all the injuries to Carl Lawson, Vinnie Curry, the Marcus Joyner, and all these guys. But... They have the next man up mentality. CJ Mosey is playing very good football. Quinton Williams broke out last week. Sheldon Rankins, John Franklin Myers, uh, the cornerbacks, and Michael Carter the second, Bryce Hall, Eccles, Guidry. These guys are playing really good football. And the craziest stat I saw on Twitter from Michael Nania of Jets X Factor is there's only two teams in the NFL that has not given up a touchdown from our cornerbacks. And that's the Jets and the Raiders. So our cornerbacks have not given up a touchdown all season long. Now, if Julio Jones and AJ Brown are out, that's going to help those corners out a lot because going into this game I'll, I said to myself this is going to be the biggest test for this defense because the first three games we went up against you know Sam Darnold, Christian McCaffrey and then Mac Jones and New England Patriots that's not really an explosive offense and then week three Teddy Bridgewater that's more of you know they rely on their defense so we haven't really went up against an explosive really good offense so far and I feel like this is going to be a really good test for the Jets but if Julio Jones and AJ Brown are out I feel like the big focus is going to be shutting down Derrick Henry because he's their entire offense especially with those two weapons out so i feel like that's going to be a big big x factor for the jets so what i want to see from the jets defensively is getting to ryan Tannehill, get get pressure on him consistently i really like what we've seen from the pass rush so far from the jets and being able to shut down derrick henry i don't expect us to be able to do that at all i'm expecting derrick henry to at least have 100 yards on the ground and a couple touchdowns because he is indeed that good he's going to be chucking some of our players it's going to be frustrating but we have to realize derrick henry is you know on another level he is one of the best running backs in the nfl today now going to the flip side of things for the jets offense um this is definitely the most you know if you look at it and who we're going up against we're not going up against the top five defense. So the New York Jets had to go up against the Carolina Panthers defense, top five in the league. They had to go up against Bill Belichick and, and them. We know what he does to rookie quarterbacks. And then they had to go up against the top five defense in Denver. So now we're going up against the Tennessee Titans defense, who has not been that good this year. They're average, if not below average. So this is a really good opportunity for Zach Wilson, Mike LaFleur, and the offense to start getting some rhythm. Am I expecting them to explode? No, I'm not expecting them to do that. It's going to be a long process of this offensive system to really get in sync with everybody from the offensive lineman to the wide receivers to the quarterback and running back it's going to take some time and as we know it's really frustrating we're not seeing you know good play calls from Michael LaFleur we're not seeing wide receivers run the right routes we're not seeing the proper protection up front and we're not seeing the quarterback make the right decisions and we're not seeing the running backs catch some passes. It's a really collective effort right now. What's going wrong with the offense? But what I, what I want to see from this Jets offense in particular earlier on in the game is establish a run game, really feed the ball to Michael Carter because he looks very good as a Jets running back. I know that he had a crucial drop last week, but that's going to happen. He's going to have some growing pains as well. He's not going to be perfect, but we need to make sure we give Michael Carter the ball in space and i feel like that's been the main thing that's been driving me crazy is the offensive line has been very inconsistent the only time we saw the run game work was against the patriots in week number two the jets ran 150 yards on the ground and michael carter got a lot of explosive runs because they actually gave him opportunities to shine so let's see some schematic you know um game plans for michael mike lafleur out of the gate give michael carter the ball in space not even out of the backfield but in the passing game also some injury news on the jets front elijah moore is dealing with a concussion as well as jeff smith 
Smith. Jeff Smith actually unfortunately got into a car accident this morning, but luckily he is okay and he's just in concussion protocol. So he'll probably be out this week. Elijah Moore could be out this week. So the big question is, is Denzel Mims going to be active? We also find out that Jamison Crowder is looking like he'll be playing this week, according to Robert Salah. So keep an eye out for that. But if Elijah Moore is out and Jeff Smith's out and Jamison Crowder might be playing, Denzel Mims better be active. And hopefully he can get some playing time because this is a conversation that, you know, every Jets fan can, can't even stand. I mean, obviously the Denzel Mims situation is driving everybody insane, including myself. Hopefully we can see Denzel Mims on the field and get some snaps because he is a very talented receiver. But obviously we, according to the coaching staff, he doesn't know the playbook. He doesn't know the certain routes, concepts, and that's a big issue if that's true. But at, us as fans, we don't know the reality of it. We're not behind closed doors at all. So what I want to see from the Jets wide receivers, we need Corey Davis to step up because week one against the Panthers, we saw him and he had two touchdowns, 98 yards and five receptions. And I was, you know, crowning him as a wide receiver one, a little prematurely on my part, for sure. The next two weeks has been very disappointing for Corey Davis. A lot of drop balls, not running the right routes, not helping out his rookie quarterback. So we really need Corey Davis to have a breakout game against his former team, the Tennessee Titans, because without Corey Davis reeling in those tough grabs, he's not helping out Zach Wilson whatsoever. We need a guy to go up there and get the contested catches, something that Denzel Mims can do. And uh, that's really my thoughts about the playmakers around Zach. So now let's talk about Zach Wilson in general. So obviously he's having a very, very tough, tough start to start his NFL career. He has two touchdowns and seven interceptions. Brutal. There's no sugarcoating it. He could not have asked for a worse start to his NFL career. Um, what I want to see from Zach Wilson is really, you know, at Denver, I feel like he didn't play that bad of a game. I saw some improvements. I feel like he's smarter with the football. You know, he had two interceptions. One of them was definitely just an insane play from Justin Simmons, an all-pro safety that just jumped the pass route. We, You know, that's one of those interceptions that I expect a rookie like Zach Wilson to make. And the second interception, he steps up in the pocket, throws a dime to Braxton Berrios, and it goes through his hands, and it's an interception. That's going to happen. There's always some interceptions that is not the quarterback fault, but that's not the point what I'm making. I want to see Zach Wilson build confidence. Confidence. I want to see him stay in the pocket and clean up his footwork because that's my issue with Zach Wilson so far throughout his first three games in the NFL. He doesn't have sound fundamentals. He doesn't really have that, you know, stepping up into the throw. I don't really like seeing him fading away so much and relying on his arm talent because obviously he can get away with it sometimes. He can really zip the ball with his arm, but I'd rather see him step up into the throws, have fundamental footwork as a quarterback and really be a pocket passer before we really see him, you know, break out and show off his talent because I feel like that's been Zach Wilson's issue so far. The timing is off with the receivers. The play calling is not inside of Zach Wilson's brain properly. He does not really, it's either he doesn't have a grasp of the offense or Michael LaFleur doesn't have the grasp of what he's calling. It's really hard to tell throughout three games, but hopefully Zach Wilson can bounce back. I would like to see him get out of the pocket a little more as well, um, th but that's really up to the scheme. That's up to Mike LaFleur. Call him plays, call some bootlegs, get him outside of the pocket. That's what he's really you know comfortable with. I know I said I want to see him stay in the pocket and throw some balls because that's that's really what tells you if you're an NFL quarterback or not. But his strength is getting out of the pocket. We know that. Zach Wilson's an athlete. He can maneuver pressure. He can go outside, throw on the run with precise accuracy. So hopefully Mike LaFleur can, you know, scheme up some plays, scheme up some easy routes for the wide receivers because we know that it's been pretty much a disaster so far for this Jets offense. So this is going to be a tough matchup against the Titans. Um, I'm really not expecting a win because we're going up against a tough team that's coached very well. They're disciplined. And this is a big test for Robert Sala and the coaching staff because we're coming off a game where we had like nine or 10 penalties. That's inexcusable. So how are they going to bounce back after getting blown out, getting literally zero points on the board? I'm expecting the defense to play well. The offense is going to be a big question mark. So leave a comment down below your thoughts of what you guys expect from this game. Do you th think the Jets have a chance to win? If they do have a chance to win, what do you guys want to see them really attack on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball? So that does it for this video. Hope you guys have a fantastic day and let's go Jets. Peace out, guys.